No, we've we've got. Uh, I don't know if it's just one guy or, or a handful of people in uh, kind of a media department. So uh, he let me borrow it. Maybe. So if someone doesn't like stand up in front of it. What's that? So if someone doesn't like stand up in front of it. Yeah. Uh, she had this tight. No, that's not what I wanted. Okay, how do I loosen that so it pivots? You want to go back? Yeah. Uh, undo the both of these. Both of them. Yeah, balls. There we go. Because I need to zoom in some. Well, hold on. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
maybe another time. You know? Yeah. I think probably the slides for now. Wow. Okay. It's amazing you think so they built how long ago it's still in production running. It's a uh, it's decent. Yeah, did you read that blog about it? Okay. Oh, the guy that probably gives it out uh, talk about how legacy is actually a good thing. Or is that like when you create something that has legacy? Well, yeah. Usually, like, it's called that. It's great that you created something so good that it's still around for you. It'll work. <laughs> like, you actually did a good job creating it. There's a positive side of it. Yeah, you want to be working on the next legacy after it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. what's that guy's name? Did we call this? Charlie Fowler? Yeah. You know, whenever. I write one. Nothing's useful. It's just old. It's just old. It's outdated, right? Yeah. Come on, Lancaster. This is only part of it. Part of it used to be like providing DOD Amazon, right? So you saw flexibility? They want to spin it off. They're so just entering more than flex three. Three. Came back to this side of the country. Good man. Hey, how you doing? Can I go back to Fox and do all the or, uh, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, yeah, like, I think we got to say, look for the two I'm glad you guys are using Meetup. It makes it a little bit easier. That is nice. I used to like put that in front of Got a lot of apps. I used to do it in our area. 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 I think it would surprise you more about what I know about the area.
Uh, January, since January of uh, 2013, so we, we appreciate the sponsorship. Kevin, where's, where's Kevin at? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Man, Kevin's taking seen. care of business for us. <laughs> Kevin's our, our OCT insider. Let's, let's give Kevin a round of applause. <laughs> Wherever he is. Wherever he is. Hopefully he gets to enjoy some of it too. Um, also, I want to thank TypeSafe. They're sponsoring our meet, uh, our meet up dues. So, I don't know if you know that, Ryan. I didn't know hey, that. thanks for TypeSafe. Thank you, TypeSafe. Yeah, yeah. 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 TypeSafe. All right. Yeah. So, um, thanks to, there might be some of you from the other groups on meet up. Uh, UJUG, um, Lambda Lounge. We tried to get the word out as best we could. It looks like it works. Um, so, thanks everyone for being here. Um, I know just we kind of want to have a good relationship with the other groups. UJUG, their next meeting is going to be on August 21st. On their website, it said they're going to be talking about GitHub by Matthew McCullough. If any of you know him, he's, pretty, he's a really good presenter. Um, and then Architecture for um, Continuous Delivery by John Esser. So, Lambda Lounge next meeting is on the 12th, next Tuesday. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it. C O Q. It's pronounced Cock. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm not very familiar with it. Yeah. Do you know? Do you want to give us a brief? Yeah, so I actually run Lambda Lounge, and it's the talk is a proof assistant. So if you like math and functional programming, you know you probably won't use it in your day job, but it might be interesting stuff coming out. And, yeah. So you're fan. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um. Thank you, Sammy. Also, want to thank Eric Peterson for kind of helping us set up this uh, presentation. I'm going to turn the time over to him to kind of kick off the presentation. So. Okay, great. Let's give Jeff a round of applause for <laughs> Thanks for leadership, Jeff. We really appreciate all that all you do. I also want to recognize our friends from Salesforce here, Mark and Dylan. Wave, there you go. Uh, helping us put this together. So the way this came about is we're working together to put together a uh, developer day at uh, LDS Church tomorrow. And uh, found out James was coming in town uh, for us. And I said, hey, you don't mind? What do you think? You want to come the night before? You know, present to a group, so it uh, worked out great. We appreciate the uh, gracious uh, acceptance of that, that invitation. Um, so we've got a, a fantastic uh, topic tonight: building and deploying reactive service pipelines. Uh, this is uh, has its foundations in microservices, uh, which, uh, depending on solutions, that may have a lot of benefits in terms of scalability, scaling features and functions, as well as performance. DevOps, just, just a number of potential uh, opportunities. And of course, Scala is a fantastic platform uh, to, uh, to build uh, these services on. So I know uh, many of you know, already know James, a uh, fantastic contributor to our industry, uh, frequent blogger, uh, author. I've listened to a number of his presentations and read his blogs. And we, we really are very pleased to have you here with us uh, tonight. And uh, so let's just uh, go ahead and turn it over to James. Cool. All right. Yeah, thank you all for coming on such short notice. It's great to have so many of you here. Uh, I've spoken to a few Scala use groups around, and um, it, this is definitely one of the bigger ones. So it's a nice work to come out. Um, so I, uh, I'm James Ward, and I'm recently at Salesforce. Uh, three months ago, I actually felt like I finally learned Scala after three years trying. So I was like, all right, type safe, see you later, I know Scala, uh, on to the next adventure. Um, so I went to Salesforce. That's uh, not really the true story, but um, I'm, I am, uh, really what's happening at Salesforce is, what I realized at TypeSafe was that the things that we were trying to build at TypeSafe they involved Salesforce because that's where all the customer data was. They involved Heroku for deploying applications and doing continuous delivery. And they were all being built in Scala and Play Framework, all the stuff we were doing in TypeSafe. And I'm like, this is weird having my worlds all come together. And Salesforce said, hey, why don't you come tell people how to do that for themselves, how to build uh, these new engagement applications with, uh, with Scala and with Play and with Heroku and with Salesforce. So, uh, so great opportunity for me there. Uh, so I'm going to be talking tonight about service pipelines, reactive service pipelines. Uh, this is a beta test of this talk, first time I've ever given it. So, uh, so we'll see how the code stuff goes. We'll do some, some pair programming as, as we work through uh, some of the, the code examples and stuff. Um, 
So this talk is going to cover uh, first the, the basics of reactive async and non-blocking stuff for those of you that haven't seen some of my other presentations on that or other content out there. And then we'll go into service pipelines, talk about what those are, um, why they're, they're cool. Uh, and then we'll talk about deployment because I think that microservices and service pipelines, one of the big reasons for moving this architecture is around deployment and making deployment easy, uh, making it easier for small teams to move quickly. So I want to show you how we can use Heroku for that. Uh, and um, so yeah, so that's that's the plan. Um, I'm going to write a bunch of code. So I'm actually personally going to sit down uh, quite a bit tonight. Um, so that's the plan. Oh, uh, question: How many people here have, have used Heroku before? Anyone? Awesome. Uh, great. So it's great to see so many people. So I'm going to spend just a little bit of time on Heroku at the end, since some of you are familiar with with that. Uh, this is going to be as interactive as you guys want it to be. So stop me, ask questions, tell me I'm wrong. I said I learned Scala. I know Scala finally, but actually I don't. Um, I'm, a, I'm an imposter that only halfway knows Scala. So um, so tell me that something could be done better, you know, um, about it. So um, so yeah. So let's dive in. Any questions before we get started? Comments? Okay. What time do we want to wrap up? Midnight. Midnight. Perfect. Okay. I got enough code to get us till 2 a.m. So midnight will be okay. And we're good. Go. What do you think about it? What, for wrapping up? Um, 7.15-ish or 7.30, okay. whatever. Perfect. That's perfect. Okay. So um, I want to just set the stage a little bit, talk about why, why reactive, why service pipelines. And I, I think we need to step back to talk about what users want first. And I think there's a few things that users have kind of always wanted. We just haven't been able to easily deliver this stuff before. The technology didn't make it easy to do this. So users want in sync data. We want the Google Docs experience of our everything always in sync. We want that everywhere. We don't just want it in a collaborative document. We want that experience in every place that we interact with data. So that's one reason. Real-time collaboration, we want, again, that Google Docs style of experience, but we want that built into to all, the, all the software that we use. We want instant feedback, and we don't want to wait. So those are, those are some of the user requirements that, that I think are, are pushing us into this direction that we're calling reactive. And really what reactive is, is about, I'll go through it in a nutshell, uh, it's about building systems that are responsive to users, and that's how we address those things that users want, is by being responsive, and having our systems be responsive to users. In order to be responsive, we need to build on a foundation that is both resilient and scalable, and to get those things, we need to be event-driven. And so that's really the core of what this whole reactive thing is about, is about building these systems that are responsive, because they're scalable, because they're resilient, and all of that because they're event-driven. You can read a lot more about this on the Reactive Manifesto. Uh, the Reactive Manifesto was put together by a bunch of people to describe these different traits and talk about them in a technology agnostic way. So if you're not doing Play and Scala, that's what I'll be using tonight, but if you're not using those technologies, the Reactive Manifesto still applies to, to really any technology. Hey, quick question. How many of you have signed that? Raise your hand if you've seen that signed. I signed it see 327 it. Okay. times. <laughs> Just kidding. Let's see. Let's see how many signatures we're up to on the React Manifesto. So you can sign it if you agree with it. 6,393 people have have signed it. We can go look at all of them. I'm going to search each of your names. Make sure that Where you signed it, Eric. There, there you are. What number? 340 days ago. Yeah. Nice work. Okay, yeah, so you can you can check that out, check out the Reactive Manifesto if you want to read more of the theory of Reactive. What I'm going to do tonight is focus more on the actual uh, what is Reactive and how do, we, how do we implement it. So I'm going to just start writing some code. Um, to do that, I'm going to create a new application. I'm going to use Activator. Uh, Activator is the tool to start building applications on the TypeScript platform. There's a command line mode and there's a UI mode. I'm going to use the command line mode. So I'm going to do activator new. There's uh, when I create a new application, there's 100 and something templates uh, that I can choose from. I'm going to just pick the play Scala one there, and we'll just call it whatever. 
So that creates now a new play app. We can see that, that play application there. Is that, can that, everybody read that font? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to actually open this project up in IntelliJ uh, to do my code editing. This will just help me with imports, basically. Um, so let's go open that up. If you're using IntelliJ with the Scala plugin installed, then you can just go open up any uh, SBT project right in IntelliJ.